<laughs> hey everybody i'm sorry i'm starting this a little early um started at 27 okay <laughs> a couple minutes early i thought for sure i'd not get in here uh hello everybody so um i'll wait a couple more minutes <laughs> until i introduce myself right i'm just hoping that this would work and that actually this does work um but um hello everybody <laughs> this is david r becker and here with you today on wednesday because tomorrow is christmas eve so we don't want to do it tomorrow and same thing with next week next week we're going to be um doing it on wednesday also because it'll be the new year's eve so we don't want to do that and um so let's see 628 um we still got a couple of minutes before i actually start right i thought for sure i screwed this up which i already did i noticed i don't know if you noticed but um the link that i put in my newsletter did not work um and i was messing around this morning i'm um, trying to figure things out and i also screwed that up so um I think when I get into my new studio, everything will be great and it'll be so much fun and uh, nothing will happen like this again. <laughs> well, we hope so. Um, so anyways, um, I'm back in my office here. I still, still don't have my studio ready yet um, to get everything in there. Um, I've got to put, I had to put a heater in and um, so a bunch of stuff I'm doing in my new studio, my new studio um, in my home. Um, this is just my office. But anyways, let's, um, let's get into this and um, it's a lot of fun tonight. Hopefully, if you guys find me here, <laughs> hopefully everybody will find me and they'll be coming in in about one minute, right? So, um, let me know if you're here watching. I'd love to, um, and if you have questions, put them in the chat and I will look up every once in a while to see what's going on there. And if you have questions, just put them in there. Uh, so, let's go to my website first off. I want to show you something here on my website is that... Um, um, so if ever you can't find the, um, link or if I, something messes up, just come to my website, come to my website and look over here on the YouTube, um, look over here. This, um, this is where you'll find, um, where I have the video going. And also if you click this picture right here, click that picture and it'll give you a bigger picture to download it and stuff. And always come to my website. If anything goes wrong within the, in the um, newsletter or something and I, I scripted a newsletter this week also i didn't put in the correct link and so come here to my um website because i can change that instantly and i also already did that for my <laughs> for this for this thing here so just go to my website at beckerart.net and then you can find everything there and so that's all quick that's all good and so let's see let's go to our supplies and so i'm going to show you the supplies i'm going to be using this week um again it's always usually the same because it's what i've used for my workshop and for my classes is this is all my holbein watercolors and my um i didn't use any transfer paper this few week but um when i do use transfer paper it's a jack richardson transfer paper my brushes of course and masking fluid i'm not using either but um if you are using it uh, holbein makes a great one so let's go back and just um and so um those are the supplies and um so the next week i just want to tell february just fine it's finally started 6 30 here we go <laughs> david r becker here and so um uh so the um next week we're going to do it on wednesday also so this week was wednesday because tomorrow is christmas eve and so next wednesday we're going to do the same thing we're going to do it on wednesday and then we'll go back to um in the new year we'll go back to thursdays and um so let me show you the value study here so we got to look over this so what we're painting tonight so here's what we're painting tonight and it is the lantern and i put a little um put a little filter on this one a photoshop filter to show you how the big values go it's kind of like my value study i kind of give it i made it pretty dark in the background just to show you that that's my darks those are my darks and let me just show you where the darks are these are the darks right and so you always have to know where your darks and light pattern are and so my dark pattern is the background and inside here and then the side and then the, my lights are of course the lantern and the um pine cone and over here i in my drawing i put a pine cone instead of whatever this was over here and I, of course you can't see the red when i made it black and white but the red will be part of the light and because it's going to be bright and so that's going to be um the the red berries will be red and they'll be bright and they'll be part of my light scene all right so let's just get started here and um hey sue i see 
Uh, everything's working. I hope, and if anything ever goes wrong, like you can't hear me or something, sound, please put it up in the chat right away <laughs> and stuff. Um, but I think I've got everything settled down and I, fig I think I've got it figured out. But um, until, of course, then I'm going to be moving into my new studio and then I'll be all over again. So we'll see. So um, uh, beer today is a um, the um, Galactic Cowboy Nitro Imperial Stout. And that comes from Colorado. And um, so we're going to toast tonight with this one. Stout. Whoa, boy. So um, cheers, everybody. Merry Christmas tomorrow <laughs> or in two days. But um, have a great holiday. And cheers, everybody. Oh, that's strong. <laughs> okay. So we better get going here. <laughs> All righty. So let's start with our lights. So of course, we always start with our light area. So the light area, what is the light area? The flame is my lightest, right? Because that's the light source. Well, there's another light source besides that, but the light I want to see is this right here, is the, um, is the flame. And then the front of this is going to be light, and then the sides. So I'm going to go right in right away and do the candle and the outer edge of the, of the lantern, because that's the light. That's the light area. You always go from light to dark. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of a wash over across it just to give it a color, the white. And because I don't want a pure white because then I'll, the pure white is going to be the light right there. That's going to be the pure white. So I have to go over these areas with a speckled little light. Just kind of, of course, I'm using violet because it's my favorite. <laughs> Everybody knows that. And so we're just going to go down here and just put in a little bit of violet. I put in a lavender, maybe a little light blue. And actually this gray over here, this is gray on gray. It's just a light gray and so i'm just going to put this in there oh i forgot i was going to put an orange in there um, we'll do that in a second so i'm just going to go in my light area and do the candle right away the candle the one side of the candle is or the mill is light here so i'm going to wet the candle again if you have questions please um put them up there and i will let you know the answer i'll try to answer if i can answer <laughs> and so here we're going to go with the the little candle part right there and it's and i did go right to the edge of that and so that'll be white there and i can kind of come here i'm just kind of getting my lights the lights again don't create the objects yet they're just giving me my color and um and i start with one color and i start with the lightest color first and then i'm going to put in the even on this um a pine cone i was going to say acorn but the pine cone what i want to do is i could have put like <clears throat> masking fluid in there and then put the dark and then take it off and then put this light in there but i'm not using masking fluid so i'm going to paint around this pine cone same thing with this pine cone which is not a pine cone in the picture but um, i'm going to put this as a pine cone <clears throat> and maybe lay some berries on the ground over here again you can change whatever you like and now i'm going to go in here and get a little bit of this violet lavender and then just put this around here. Now the background is my dark, right? And so there may be some of this color in there, but that's the dark area. So um, getting my lights first. And you always get your lights in watercolor. It just makes sense to get the light. I mean, it's not a rule, like, you know, you have to follow a rule, but it just makes sense to do your lights first because then you take your darks on top of them. So then I also, um, I'm gonna take the um, glow of the orange that's gonna be coming from the candle and that's another light and so i'm going to go in here and put some of that orange in that and like it's going to be inside here here put little dots in there because this is the outer edge and this is the inside the little dots of orange this part we're going to have a dark on top of this area we're going to have a dark there so that will glow through then it'll be like the glow here the white is going to be the inside is going to be darker so i'll put the um glow with more of a dark uh area there later so then we also take the orange glow and reddish glow and put it underneath here where it's going to reflect it reflects underneath the spots here because that's going to be inside glowing and you can put it on the background too but you don't do that yet you can do that later on and here we can put a little glow of orange so you're glowing everything right now you're putting things that are going to be glowing with the, maybe this pine the needles here have a little bit of glow on it so I'm putting it down so that when I negative paint and put the other stuff on top, it's going to glow orange. And so we go in here. Now, don't touch your flame. The flame is white. Um, that's going to be your brightest bright, lightest light in there. If you put a color there, then you uh, manipulate it so it's not the brightest, and that's not going to be good. 
And so what I'm going to do here is take my round brush, maybe my small round brush, and I'm going to make the glow happen around the flame. And so I'm just going to wet it here. And so I can do that. I mean, but don't touch the flame itself because that will um, ruin your lightest light. So I can put a little bit of orange right there. There's a glow, there's a really heavy glow going around it, right? You can do that. It's like when we do the trees and the sun or in the trees. You, you wet it and you put the glow right there, make it really nice orange, right? Where that starts to glow. And then um, let that be a little bit thicker. And now you can put it in later too. Um, like if you find that underneath here, there's a little bit of glow and it wasn't orange enough or it didn't get to quite orange enough, then you just put it in there later also. All right, so those are my lights. Now the berries are bright red, right? Little whatever the berry is that they use for Christmas. Christmas berry, I call them. So I'm going to just do a little round circles. And I put them in now because that when I want to do the dark background, I'm going to, you know, go around them. And I even can go through some of them. But here I'm just going to put in these bright, bright berries and they can be some orange. Kind of leave a highlight, a little highlight in on them so they look kind of wet or shiny. You can do that. On some of them, you don't have to, and on all of them. And you also make the one side a little bit darker. You can go around there and make the other part sides a little darker too. And again, I could have masked these out with the thing, but again, I'm not a big maskoid guy. And um, But you can do maskoid and just put those in there. Or afterwards, I could also put a white and red on top of the dark too, because I, I don't mind if you use a, an opaque color and go right on top of that either. So, okay, so there we got the berries, little highlights on them. I can maybe make it a little bit dark, or I also can put the dark in later, or if you want a soft edge, like underneath. Actually, the light's coming up through there, so mm, I could put the light dark on the top part so that it looks like it's being lit up from the bottom. See, I didn't think at first. The highlights should have been on the bottom because then this, oh, look at right there, got hard edged. Watch your hard edges on your glow. Because I want this to be a nice, nice soft edge glow, not a hard edge glow. All right. And I think that's getting close to all my lights, my light colors. Maybe I'll put a little bit of the green. I mix my green with Cronectinum gold and a blue. And I'm just going to do a little bit of lighter green and the pine needles, the ones that are close down here. And they're not like that in the... In, in the um, picture, but me knowing that the light comes through stuff through glass and it's going to make these a little bit lighter. So that's just me thinking about how the light's going to affect what's around it. And, and I can even put it in here. And again, this is more of a middle tone and the light, not my darks yet. And I put a round thing here instead of the little, little latch on that thing. I just put a round circle for the um, handle of that. Any questions? Hey Tina, hey Carol, hey Maura, hey Mill, Millie, Millie's here from Tennessee. All right, and I'm um, Sue, and Sue is here. Thanks for dropping by on a on a Wednesday. All right, so darks, we got all our lights, right? Our candles there, um, we got that pretty much set. So we're just gonna go in now and get the darks. And there's also a little light reflecting in there, so I kept that little bit of orange and stuff. But I'm gonna start, I think, with the background. Let's go with the background because it's the lightest part of the of the darks is the background here a little bit. What do I make it? I don't want to, in the photo, it's kind of a brown, brownish gray, but that doesn't mean I have to go with that color. I can go with a warm, you know, brownish gray, but I like to put a little bit of violet in there because I love, because I love violet. <laughs> I feel like violet is a brown in, in disguise. <laughs> and so we're going to go here and then just start. That's not a warm, so maybe I make it a little bit warmer. Some red, some violet. So this is a terracotta. This is a violet over here. And so let's go in here and make it a little bit warmer. Now this is now, of course, would have been easier if I do if I did do it with um, masking fluid, but I get kind of um, with the masking fluid. It kind of it gets you know. It's something I could go around. It just takes a little bit longer to go around, but I find that sometimes if I use the masking fluid, it gets too harsh and gets too hard edged. 
So we're going to go with a little bit of light. And see how I change colors and stuff in here? Once it's wet, I drop colors in there afterwards. Let me go with a round brush because it's easier to draw with a round brush when I have to go around those berries for the background. I'll keep both, both brushes right here. But when I'm going through here, I'm going to kind of go through and try to draw around them real quick. As long as it stays wet, as long as it stays wet over there, I can... Um, drop other colors in there. And of course, I'm gonna drop some orange in there so it reflects the from the light. And if I didn't get some of the roundness of the berries, then that's okay, because later on, I'll just go back in and make them opaque with a little bit of, a little bit of opaque color in red and go right over top of them. And, and I should make the light part on the bottom, because again, I want it to look like it's coming up from that way. And what is this? Oh, that's a berry too right there. I'm just going to go over that berry and I'll put it in later. So I'm going to do the background in a way so that the lantern sticks out at the end because I'm negative painting the lantern, right? You always negative paint something that's lighter. So wet here a little bit. Now, the problem I did here, which I, I it's not a problem, but if I were you, Start in an area where you're not going back and forth. I should have started down here, worked this all around, and that way I don't go back and forth. Uh, that was not a good thing. I did it to show you guys, <laughs> but you shouldn't too. <laughs> so here we go around this side. So because right now I've got to watch that, and so if that doesn't, um, so that doesn't get to be a hard edge. So let me just wet this real quickly here, and I'll go back to that in a second. And I'll keep it light, so that's going to be darker anyway. So now I can go back to this side. So I would suggest if you're going to do this, start down here, work your way around if you're doing the background. It just will help you out a little bit in here. I'm putting a little violet in there. And this is supposed to be darker, darker than the background, this um, pine needles. But um, I can do it both. I can make it lighter in some spots and I can make it darker in some spots. Have fun floating colors. You know, it's so much fun floating different colors. You don't have to stick with what's in the photograph. And if you want to make it look like the photograph, then go ahead. You know, you just make it look exactly like the photograph. Go in there with the exact color it has. I kind of like to have it just be whatever. So I'll put some violets in there. I'll put some pinks in there. And I'll put some red. Because it is a Christmas type of looking thing. Holiday type of thing. So we're going to go down here. And now I'll use some black and purple. Some really dark colors. To kind of pop this um, pine cone out. And negative paint some of it. I'm not going to do the pine cone yet. I'm just kind of going in here and getting the shadow. And if I look at my photo, this is kind of dark around here. I can make it a paint around the pine cone. I'm going to stop there because it's a nice small little spot. I can't do this and that. So I'm going to go back up here now before it dries and kind of get in there and get that stuff done. And that's how come I said you probably should have went this way around so that you can don't have to stop and go back and forth quickly. Didn't plan that well enough. <laughs> well, I started here because it was the lightest light and it goes to darks as you go around. But um, sometimes you have to go and start dark and go light and dark, you know, because if it dries and you get that line in there, then it doesn't look nice. Here, I'm negative painting this thing here. A little round hoop that it hangs on. We got Rose and Jill just joined in. Jill's from Syracuse and Rose. I'm not sure where she, Rose is from, but welcome. Let's see, we got this through here. All right, so we're getting our background in here. Let's see, we got our lights and stuff. And now I know these branches in the photo are all dark against the light. So you can do a little bit of that, but don't be afraid of putting some of the branches, have them a little bit of light green. So I'll take my blue and my cronacridum gold, and I'll put a little bit of light in there too. And then um, that way I can use that light green as part of the light part of the pine needles. But then at the same time, I can go in there with a really nice dark dark. I'm using permanent violet, black, and I'm just going to go in there and just get some warmth, get some orange in there, float it. I'm keeping this a little bit lighter so that I can make it dark, dark um, needles when I come back in there. It's 
kind of using my big round brush again because I, I like to when I'm doing a shape it's easier to do the shape with the round brush than it is especially for these little round circles berries here uh, roses from the villages in Florida which I will be down there in come in January I have my only <laughs> my only live workshop will be at the villages in um, January if you go to the villages um it's in my website it's on my newsletter on my website if you look there you'll see where that's at we're going to be very um socially distanced and we're going to have our masks on and so we'll be we'll be watching that um place in the villages that really watches out for everything i know they uh, they post every once in a while but they're watching out really well and so here we go down here get this dark Now let's do the front and that's our background and it looks like it's shining i just noticed it's shining here a little bit let me see if i take it straight down so you can see it uh, go way up i'm not gonna put my beer there let me think let me see if i got something i can put them there uh, let's put a measuring tape underneath there so you guys can see without reflecting light oh i'm spattering all over here now Okay, so now let's go to our front here, to the underneath this, um, on the floor, the, the front, which is wood on there, and I guess you can make it look like that if you'd like, and um, I'm going to start out with just um, wetting it with a little bit of orange, excuse me, orange, <laughs> boy, <laughs> the stout is strong, I guess, so here we go, cheers, Eddie. <laughs> by the way, cheers, everybody. Why did I use orange? Because in the picture, it's kind of like a wood brownish color. I'm going to start with the lighter part, and I'm going to cross it quickly. You saw I went across it quickly to get a little texture. You know, see how when you go across it quickly, across the paper with your brush, and you like that, see how you pick up a little texture in there? Let me show you close up. So see how the texture you get in there? And you can do that for things like water, sparkles, and stuff. And But if you go across it quickly, you get a nice looking of um, texture. One of those texture things you can do and then I can go in there with a thick amount of paint and get some of the dark the dark um what do you call it the lines in the in the wood the grain the grain of the wood you can get that in there and so I'm just going to kind of quickly take it across now you can only do that when it's dry the paper so you know, you're going to get a hard edge like when it's wet it's just going to bleed in right so you're not going to get that look of the um rough edges and the dots the light dots so here now i'm going with a nice dark edge all right so we go in here and just get a nice dark in there underneath the underneath the lantern it's nice and dark and so i'm in my dark stage already there was not many lights in there because it is like kind of candle lit the area so it's kind of fun to go in here and then just make um, your darks. And then I'll take the darks and put some orange and then I will let them bleed into this area. Looks like it's a nice little, you know, so that's how I get a soft edge. For any of you newcomers that don't know how I work, I work with um, a lot of soft edges and to get the soft edges, you have to put down water and let the water make the hard edges or the soft edges not the hard edges hard edges you get when you have a, a dry sheet of paper that's how you get the hard edges and now there's going to be a shadow from the pine cone against that and we'll get that later um, when this dries because we get the big areas first the big areas of dark first and so let's get a little of this in here all right any questions what paper weight the weight of the paper is um 300 pound i always use 300 pound and that's what we'll be using down in um at the villages I, i'm actually that those down there in the villages we're going to be doing um, i'm bringing all the supplies for this one and so um i'll be quarantining the supplies and then um, they're all, everybody's using the same thing so now I'm going with my smaller round brush and I'm going to start going into uh, my darks on the, on the lantern itself. While this dries, because that's when the, the, um, the, once this dries, I can put in the, um, 
see what you call it, the pine needles. So let's go in here first and just, you know, I should probably be using a rectangle brush for a rectangle shape. So your flat brushes for rectangle shapes. And so what I'm going to do is that's looking through the glass here. And so I'm going to take that color I had to use in the background and just make a nice hard edge back here. So it looks like you're seeing through into the background there. And that's just a dark. And so what I can do is I can just make this nice and dark. And so I put down water with a little bit of color. And then I can go in and manipulate that with, by putting thicker amounts of paint and also different colors. It's about the amount of pigment you have in your brush that makes it look so nice and when you get in there and you can control it. You can't control water on water. It's just un uncontrollable. You have to go in with a, a lot, large amount of pigment so that it will only bleed so far into the water. And once you get that figured out, uh, things become easier when it comes to, for soft edges. You know, because then you can control the watercolor a little bit better. And see, now I'm, I'm, I am I took a thick amount of orange without any water in my brush. There's no water in my brush. It's just pure pigment. And then the water's already down here, so I can push it around. I can make it soft edge, and I can make it look like it's glowing that direction. See how it looks like it's glowing? Because I use a little bit more orange, and it's wet. It's going to be a soft edge, and I'm just pushing a little bit thicker. And I can even make a line. Let's say um, if I make it really thick, I can even put that little, there's a little glow of this right there and that'll just be glowing right there and I can push it around a little bit but now I notice I had water in my brush which is I shouldn't have had remember I was saying just pure pigment the water's already down there there's a little glow of that little of the light shining in there same thing with this part um, now this dark that I had here um, the, the lighter area of the lantern wasn't white but um, I can change that once I get this dry so now what I'm going to do is go in here and get the same look of the glow, the dark, around the, around the flame. So again, I've got to go around it first with just clear water. I'm going to use clear water because I want it to be soft edged. Make this little line right here. So I wet it first, and so it's wet, and now I pick up thick amount of pigment I wipe my brush on the towel again I, I use a towel now all the time I don't have to have little bits of paper all over a rag I just use my whole painting surface to <laughs> to put my um to use as a towel to use as my my paper towel so I'm going in here with a dark purple reds nice and thick if you want to dab away the water do one side and then take your brush and flip it over and then the other side will have the paint. Get out the water on one side and the paint on there. So I'm gonna have a glow here now. And so I need it nice and dark right in this corner. But as it goes towards that area, I'm gonna use my small round brush, pick up pure orange, and then let that be like a glow right there. Let that make that a glow. See how it's glowing? It's gotta be soft edge. Gotta be soft edge. And how do you get soft edges? You wet it first and let it do it by itself. You don't have to do anything. It does it by itself with the amount of pigment you use in there. The pigment will just bleed so far because it's wet and it's thick. So over here, the same thing. I'm going to do a little glow. Now wet this with my, my um, flat brush. And I can put a little bit of color in there because I can see where I'm going. I probably should have made my what light areas of the lantern a little bit darker in some spots, but I can still do that. I can give it texture too by rolling across it quickly later on when it's dry. But now I'm putting this little color here. This is the dark. And now I've noticed that down here, it's darker than up there because it's glowing up there. So again, wipe out your brush on one side, pick up the pigment on the other, pick up a lot of pigment. That's why you, that's why you want fresh pigment. No dry little clumps in your palette, please always nice and um, rich and, and wet pigment. Holbein has that because they don't have oxgall in it, so it never dries to a hard clump. Like some of the manufacturers have oxgall in it, like Daniel Smith and those guys. They're great paints, but you, um, if you let them dry and they're not fresh, you're gonna get them really hard edged or hard, you, know, you can't get enough pigment. So let's see, this is a little bit dark here on this side. Get any questions? Let me know. And now this whole side of the um, of the 
lantern itself is also dark. So let's do that now. Let's get that side of the lantern dark. And I'm going to use a little bit more of a different color. I'm going to use like a cooler color. So the purple's in there. So basically my color scheme is yellows, orange, and yellow, more of yellow to the purple. I mean, a lot of times when you're using yellow, you go to a blue. But I'm making this more of a red, red, yellow glow. Or right, that's what I'm thinking, sort of. <laughs> so I'm going to go down here. No, I can't do that one because it's wet, so it'll bleed into there. So I'm going to make this right away. Get this down here. And the side of the wall here, same thing. It's going to go right through this um, pine needles because I'm going to make them darker coming through. And then down here is the pine cone, which I'm going to take a little bit of this dark brownish color I have here now. Oh, first let me just get this little part here. This is the side of the lantern base. And then I'm just going to put a little, um, go around some of these, um, on these pine cones, they have light areas. Like, I know there's not one on this side, on the, on the right side, but I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to do over here, over here, to kind of go around the light parts of the pine cone. It's like doing a pine tree. Um, you kind of leave the top part of it light, when there's snow on a pine tree, like we did, we did something like that last week. What did we paint last week? <laughs> and so, um, oh no, we did a door last week. We did a door, which everybody who did it and showed me, very nice job, guys. Did a great job on that. So now we come over here and we do the same thing. We go around the dark and use the dark around the light tops of the pine pine cones. Bottom part is darker, and it's the top part that always is lighter. I don't know if they sprayed some sprinkle stuff on there. And if you have it drawn up right, you know, there's no problem going around things because you have it drawn up. So drawing is the number one thing. Make sure your drawing is on and it's right. No bad drawings. There's no need to get bad drawings. You either trace it, um, use a projector, um, draw it on freehand, whatever you do, you just got to make the drawing good. No matter how you do it, I don't care how you do it, but it's got to be good. It's got to be correct because if you're painting, I don't care how good a painting you are, if your drawing is not correct, you're not going to have a good painting. It's just that simple. So if you got to trace it to make it right, then do whatever you have to do to make it right, the drawing. And so we go here, we're going to put these little lines, and so we're going to just kind of come here. Since they have that color right there, I go around this whole thing right here using my rigor on this one, my straight long line. The reason the rigor is so cool is because it holds a lot of paint and pigment in it. If you use a little short um, needle type of brush, then it, you don't can't go far. You always got to refill it. This one, I look at, it, I did this whole thing. And I'm still doing it here because it's filled with a lot of paint and a lot of um, water. And if you just get a short little brush, it does a little bit and it runs out right away. So here it's so much nicer to use a big brush like that. I have to wait till that dries to get that dark. And then there's this, there is a little bit dark underneath here, but there's also the little vibrancy, the orange underneath there too. Here I got it a little messy, a little sloppy with that part. Um, this part is gonna be darker. Actually, we can do that right now. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to use like a little shadow part and it's kind of grayish. So use a little bit of this gray and, and grays are easy to find on your palette when you're working along because it's everything mixed together complements will get you a gray and kind of like a muddy color. And they're not muddy colors, they're just gray colors. So I'm going to go across this quickly. Just get a little shadow in there. And then once something's wet, remember what I say, when, so when something is wet, then go ahead and um, here I'll put a little bit of texture in there. My little finger, a little texture in there, a little grain and stuff of the wood. I can always put in like a little bit of orange to make it look like it's reflecting the light a little bit. It's only when it's wet though, because then it's going to float. It's going to float on top of the surface. I'm not going to do this yet until that's dry. So let's get up here and do our dark, um, our dark area here. And what I was saying before, the orange there now is going to be great because it's going to shine through when I put my dark, my dark darks through there. So I'm going to do the side here. 
nice and dark. How much time do we have? Oh, we're only at seven o'clock. Nice. So it's nice when you don't have problems <laughs> with the videos. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry, um, those people who um, got the the link from the newsletter, and I totally screwed it up today, trying to learn how to do all these things. But it's a learning process, and hopefully by the time I get into my new studio, we're gonna have uh, no problems whatsoever, and it'll be nice. It'll be very cool. So here I'm going to do a dark underneath there. Wet it up a little bit. Ooh. If you want to take something out, just rinse off your brush and just pull out some of the paint. See how I make it rounded? And then again, put a little water. Again, water makes your edges soft. That's how you make your edges soft. You don't have to soften edges or blend them like other mediums. You just wet it and let it blend itself nicely together. Now in here, I'm going to do some negative painting of dots and such. I didn't... If you're doing this like where it's photographic, then you'd have to draw it exactly like it is up there. I'm kind of doing it more of a gesture of that pattern that's in there. I don't don't I don't have the patience to do everything photographic. So um, if you do that, that's fine. But hopefully you have patience, more patience than I do. I just give it a, a kind of look like that. So now we're going to go down here and just kind of come down the side here. And then for this, the same thing. Where I would I do? is it's lighter than the background and so what I'll do is I'll kind of come here and do little lines but now I'm going to go in here and just kind of make dots and stuff and make it look like some kind of pattern and if you look close there is a pattern, definite pattern in there but I don't need to get it exactly because my whole painting is not photographic so I can just keep it at a very um, loose kind of style so you want to get a loose style. It's not so much about loosening up like how you're painting. It's about what not to put in, like what to simplify. That's how you get looser. It's by simplifying objects in your painting. So you don't have to paint, put everything in there very tight. All right, and so this got all screwed up. Look at that. that hmm. Let's go in there and clean that up, the background here. I'm just going to take it from here and just kind of make that a little bit there we go. That's a little bit better. And then I'll put the little um, little stems or the berries. So now in here, it's a little bit more important how you draw it because it's kind of your center of interest, this area. So I'm going to go in there with my small brush first and kind of get some of the, some of the orangey darks in there. Hey, Lillian. Thanks for coming by. I hope you found it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to put in um, Facebook um, the new link because I screwed up the link from my newsletter. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. Boy, I had this, sometimes these these electronic things really screw up. And so now I'm going to go in here and get the darks that you're seeing inside because you're seeing kind of the dark, the darker part that's inside, not the outer edge. So this is negative painting the inside. And you're painting the outer edge by painting the inside. Negative painting. And again, if I would draw this up perfect like the photo, you know, it would take you a while, but I'm kind of faking it a little bit. Just kind of putting in some of the things I think I drew in, like this little upside down hearts that are on there, if you look. And, um, and then make the bottom part here a little bit clean. But there's a, it's basically a bunch of dots that are kind of put together nicely. But you decide on how detailed you want it. That's not part of the composition. That's part of your style. And your style is, um, you know, some people are tight, some people are loose. So you decide on what your style is. A lot of excuse me, it's going to be whatever, how long you've been painting. And it's basically set already in stone in a way until you keep on painting. But the composition is that this top part is lighter than the side, and so that um, that stays the same. It doesn't matter if it's if it's loose or tight. That is the that's the part of the composition that you keep the same. Light, dark, and here I'm gonna have to rub that out a little bit there. Let's see how I, I there's no pattern in mine, um, and so it's not gonna look like the photograph is identical, but it's gonna look like there's little holes in it that you can see through.
I know a lot of beginners have to they have to make it look just like the photograph otherwise they feel it's not good enough it'll be good enough believe me it's going to be good if you learn how to um, just let let the watercolor and let your style develop on its own it'll, it'll come there it all depends on who your teacher is and how much you paint and just let your style grow it'll grow on its own if there's a certain style you like, of course, copy it and trace it and try to see how they do it. I do that a lot where I take a, a master's work and I kind of try to copy it and see how he did, how he did it. And then um, hopefully some of it will rub off on you and you kind of keep that in, you know, as part of your style. All right, so there we have the lantern almost done. Let me put some of these hinges on. And so hinges are one shot deal. Look at that one. Boom. That's how come you use a horizontal or flat brush because it's uh, basically this is a um, rectangle and the brush makes a rectangle really easy, a flat brush. And so we'll just put that in there. Now let's get into our um, into our pine needles. So that I'm going to do with my round brush, my big round brush. Because my big round brush, and let me show this on a sheet of paper, on a scrap sheet of paper. If I'm behind me here, hold on one second. One second. So here we got a scrap sheet of paper. And if you look um, uh, with a round brush, what you can do is I'll take this dark blue, I'll take a little bit of this Cranacridum gold, make a green, pretty dark, and this is Prussian blue for really dark. But if I take this brush and I just point it like that, it's going to make dots, right? But if I push it on the side, if I push it and I'm using the side of the brush, like I'm pushing it away, it kind of gives me these little, I call them the pine needles, basically, right? So it's the side of the brush, and if you bend the brush, see how I'm bending the brush? It's, if you can see it close up, if you're bending the brush sideways, it picks up the little hairs on the edges. And so um, you're kind of using not the front brush, you're using the side brushes, bristles, to get that look. So see how you just do the little... So you're pushing it sideways, you're going like this, you're pushing it into the paper and you're using the side of the brush, um, this part, to get that look of pine needles. Just a little trick. I, 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 I learned that by accident when I was actually using my brush to just to tap down something, but... Um, I'm going to use, again, Prussian blue, black, and a little bit of this Cranacridum gold to make a really, really dark, dark um, needles. So I'm just going to do the same thing now on the paper and um, practice it first. Don't just all practice on your painting. <laughs> it's the worst time to do it. It's practicing, or if you've never done something before, do it first on your um, scrap sheet of paper. And then take it over, and then once you got it figured out, then go ahead and do it on your on your painting and see how um if you can see close up see how it kind of looks like pine needles i'm just making them dark i'm pushing i'm pushing it I'm pushing this i'm bending the brush and pushing it your brush may not do that depending on what kind of brush if you have a becker art brush um it will work because and it works on um the the, the big ones and the small brushes and so I'll take this down here this i'm just going to fill in now since it is wet, since it's wet, I'm going to put some other colors in there. Because you know me, I don't like just having one color in an area. Even with if it's just, I know it's all dark green, uh, that's okay. I can put other colors in there so that it reflects some of the, maybe the orange here. Watch this little orange in there. Reflects some of the orange that's coming out of the lantern. Don't be satisfied with just one color on something. Get in there with, here I'm taking pure orange, pretty thick too, and I'm bending the brush. Let's see if you can see it better this way. If I'm bending, I kind of bend the brush. See, I bend it, I push it, and bend it at the same time. There's a little bit of orange I put in there. See, I put a little orange in there. Later on, I can also go in with my um, rigger brush, my rigger brush, and go in there and get some even finer details of the needles. So I got to do that over here, but over here, I'm going to start out with my small brush because I got to first get this really dark, dark. 
dark green and if um, they have greens like um, bamboo green that's you can, don't have to mix them but I kind of like to mix my greens it's up to you you can either buy the tube with the color or you can mix some greens here's a smaller brush I'm still gonna do the same thing where I kind of wisp it now this doesn't hold as much water so I'm getting more of a hard edge there so I'm going to go back to my big brush because it holds water and the pigment at the same time and then I can get that more look of the pine needles if you come up with any kind of like um, neat way of doing something, you know, it's fun. Uh, I've used um, rubber band brushes that they have these rubber band brushes that you can make texture for. Something like using aluminum foil and crunching it to make effects and stuff. There's all kinds of different kinds of ways you can make effects on watercolor paper. And so if you find some way, you know, you can share it or just keep it for yourself. And then maybe that's part of your style. And then we'll know how you did it. <laughs> so now I'm putting a little orange in here. To show the reflection from there and then at the same time I'm going to put a little of this dark inside there too because that's going to be in there and so I'm going to go later with opaques just because I think some of this guy is a little bit too dark and so I can put a little bit of opaque in there let's get a darks around here now because that was now it's dry and I can go in and get my little dark darks in here so I'm going to go in here, so it's like a little, it's pretty dark right there. And so I'm going around. And then I'm just going to put little dots in there because it's the same thing with these dots are against the light, but these are shadow darks. So it still goes inside there, but it's just a little bit darker now. Crevices. Crevices where you get the really darkest darks. And now we can also do this line because it's dry now. Put a little water on my brush, make it a little bit warmer. Drop color in there. You can always drop color after you got something wet, once you wet it up. Then just go ahead and drop all the colors in there. And even light colors. Let's say I want to put a little bit of um, a violet. I'm going to take a little bit of lavender. It's wet. I'm just going to float a little bit of the lavender in there. It'll make it look like it's in the shadow because it's not orange. And it'll make it look a little bit nicer when it comes to the, the glow then you get more of the glow put a little bit of glow right there now inside here is really dark next to the candle so i'm going to go in here now and now it's i'm at a detail stage so i'm at finished detail stage where you're getting little little things not big details like the um the pine needles um, but um, bigger areas um, you get first of dark of the darks but then you go in for the the kill the little stuff the little things that make everything kind of come together turn upside down here so i don't put my hand in the water i'm just going to go in here and make a nice nice straight line next to the candle steady 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 and then just let it bleed off here a little bit back upside down Put a little water there. Water makes it soft edge, right? So I just put a little water there. Blend it in a little bit, soft edged. The um, candle itself will be a little bit darker. Now this little knob here, let's get our knob done here. I made it not a latch, I made it a, a round knob. I just felt it better and it's just my choice. You can make it the latch. Any questions? Oh, here, a bunch of, is that a round brush? Yes. Um, the one I used is a number around 16 round, and this is around number eight. And um, the flat brushes is a half inch, quarter inch, and then the one and one half inch. But I found doing all of the little things, I'm using most of the round, because I'm drawing. So it's more like a pencil, like you're drawing. And here, I'm gonna go in here. And Carol has a question. To get the dark green, you mix Prussian blue and Cranactum gold. What other color did you use to get the dark green? No, just those two colors. You can also put black in there. You can put some red in there if you want to warm it up a little bit. But um, I basically use the colors that you said. The Prussian blue and Cranactum gold makes a pretty dark green. As you can see right here, I'm just going to make a dark green right there. And then, like I said, anytime it's wet, you can always float other colors in there. 
Any questions, just put them up there. I will answer. And I look up. <laughs> I don't look up all the time, but now I'm going to put a little bit of orange on top of the candle to show a glow on top of the candle right here. Again, this is detail stage now, so um, details, very detailed. No, no, you don't have to go fast for this part. Go slow, actually, so you can get it looking just the way you want it. Here, put a little knob on there. I'm just going to make it a little dark in there. And my red, I'm going to take a little red and a little white to make a pinkish color to make my um, berries look a little bit nicer. They're pretty... They're pretty um, out there, and so I got rid of some of the roundness to them. So I can just go back in and round them up a little bit, make them a little bit rounder. And then I can go in and also make some extra ones or put little dots in there. And then I also want to put some down here because I just think that needs somewhere else, the red, the bright red that you have somewhere else. So I'm gonna put a couple of down here. And actually you can put them into the pine needles too. I mean, let's see, maybe there's one kind of Christmassy thing to do to put those little berries here and there. Now the pine cones themselves have, I don't have enough shadow on the light areas. So now I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath the bottom parts of the light part, with a little lavender, just put it underneath the bottom parts of the, of the light. Like you do with the snow, when you're doing snow on top of a pine tree, you put the little shadow underneath on the bottom part same thing over here away from the light and i'm considering the candle to be a light part even though i know there's another light on this whole thing but i'm kind of keeping it as trying to make it look like everything's coming from this light right here let's put a little bit darker um brownish color here for for the shadow of let's say this right here can have a shadow kind of coming across and again i can put a little a grain in the wood, maybe a little knot in the wood. Now the berries need to have um, little stems on them because they're coming from somewhere. So I'm putting little little stems, little branches, maybe crossing over here a little bit. You can even put some round, dark brown berries in, like they're they're silhouetted. I know they're not in the shot like that, but hey, and whatever you can do to make dimension, like something behind something, something in front of something. So I'm putting in dark little, little berries, like they're silhouetted behind these other berries. And then you can add, actually add red to them, cover the black a little bit to make them look like they are what they are, red berries. All right, so that's that. Now, final, I think we have to go in and get the get the lantern on the inside a little bit darker. Because the darker you get the lantern on the inside, the more it's going to look like it's glowing. You now, the darks make the things glow. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker, some of the inside parts. I'm taking a wash of color. Make this a little bit... So it looks like it's inside there. Make it a little bit darker. Here we're gonna make it like it's reflecting shadow there. How much time do we get? Oh, we still got 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And so we're gonna go in here and um, like I said, get these parts a little bit darker. Now I can get this part dark too. I always like to put a little little glow in the in the eve of things. On a house, the eaves, you just put a little bit of glow of orange. Even though they're not maybe um, light getting there, just put orange there. I, I tell you, it works great. Putting little orange glows in the eaves of things. Underneath here too. And here maybe a little bit of orange underneath there too. Glows, it glows. How about some of the needles now glowing also? And then I'm gonna take my rigger brush, take some pure orange, maybe with a little white and orange, just so it glows a little bit. So 
what I'll do is I'll take and just again get nervous and then your hand shakes a little bit and so you just do a little I know there's white in here and I'm doing an opaque color but look at how nice that looks with the little glow get a little bit closer see how you just take a little bit of it glows it up a little bit so I, I could have put masking fluid there before but you now just do it with with white paint and a little bit of orange and look at how nice it looks just don't enter into the TWSA or any um, award thing that doesn't allow opaques it's kind of like a gouache kind of technique and here make little dots so it's like you're pointing it then some of these needles have to be darker actually because they're against the light so anytime you juxtaposition the color the values so here I need to make some dark needles because it's going across the light area right so just get your darks in there and now the candle itself is too light because it doesn't you can't see it different from the um, outside of the outside of the lantern so I'm going to turn it sideways because I wanted to do a gradation. I'm going to go from this hard edge. I'm going to take pure water. I'm just going to put water in here first because I want it to soak downwards. And then I want a nice dark color. And so maybe I'll take a nice dark violet with a little bit of warmth, gray. And I'll just let it bleed downwards. I've got it on an angle so it'll bleed downwards. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to bleed down into so that it looks like it's rounded and it's a white candle. But that's a dark area. And so I'm just letting it go soft edged. And kind of helped it along a little bit. You can also put a little bit of a yellow or um, kind of a glow in there also. Like it's glowing. Because it is white and it can pick up other colors. And then it'll be on the edge. I'm going to make the edge darker again. A little dark edge right there. But see how, how it, it, it feels like it's r coming around. I'm going to put a really dark, dark right here. Just to let it bleed in there. A little nice dark. I didn't toast for a while. Here, let's toast everybody. Cheers. Merry Christmas in the next couple of days. Um, let me think what I still got to do. The front of the, the front of the housing now, I have to get a little bit darker. It's almost a little bit too bright and not enough texture on it. So, and that got too green. So I'm going to go in there with a little red on my candle because I'm going to warm that cool. I've got to turn sideways again. Sorry, guys. i got to turn sideways so it bleeds downwards. And we are let the let the watercolor do its own thing it does so much for you if you just let it um, you don't have to do very much in watercolor when it comes to the softening of edges it does it on its own if you just wet it a little bit of shadow there okay let's get some texture in the front of this thing and i think we're almost done i still have to go a little bit lighter here with this i'm gonna put a few more a few more of the needles here I got a little bit too crazy here with too much. Okay, in the front of it, how are we going to do that? So I said texture, number of texture. There's many ways of getting texture. One way is, like I said, aluminum foil or wax paper. You can push it on there. You can take a brush quickly across the page. But watch out how much water and how much pigment you have. You don't want it too dark. I'm going to take that lavender that I put up in the beginning. And what I'm going to do is go across it quickly. Use the side of the brush. I'm going to turn it sideways again because it's easier to like your writing. I'm going to take it like this. I'm just going to kind of quickly go across it. I'm barely touching it. See how I've got it upwards, upright, and I'm just kind of wisping it across the paper. This way I'm going this way. And I'm just picking up the grain of the paper and letting it hit the tops of the paper so it kind of gives it kind of like a textury look. And the, the thing is kind of textury. Is it like a brushed, like somebody sanded it or something, kind of texture. So I'm just going to cross it. My brush isn't really, really wet. It's just kind of damp. And I'm taking pure pigment and running it across the top of the of the paper. And can you see that? See how it's a little bit more of a texture? And I go across it quickly to get that look. 
And it's not really, really, really wet. It's just slightly wet. My brush, not the paper. The paper is dry, so I can get that texture. Because again, you can't get texture with a dry, with a wet paper because then you're going to get a soft edge. So it's kind of a dry brush too. I don't brush wet my brush too much, but enough to get it down on top of the paper. And I may want to go in there with a little bit of darker orange around the flame, but the flame, just keep it white. Don't do anything to the flame. Just do stuff around it. So I'm just going to go in, go in here and just do a little bit of around the flame itself. A little hit here and there, but that's pretty much it. You can also use white paint. Um, and if there's something you missed and you want to use white paint, go ahead and use it and just make your, make your things look a little bit nicer. Like here, I'm going to take white paint with a little bit of this orange and white. I still need a few more of these the pine needles. I think they look nicer when you get them. Oh, that's almost too much, huh? Let's go in there with my finger. And these right here, maybe a little bit thicker. Any questions? Let me see. Love the tip. I'm crying. Late arrival. Okay, Everett came in. Hey, Linda. Hey, Everett. Hey, Francis. Francine. Francine came. And Jill. Let's see. Anybody have any questions? Okay, like the pine needles technique. All right. No questions. Let me just look one more time. And then I think we're done. I'm going to put a little white on the hinges just to make it look metal. Get the metal hitting in there. Maybe here, a little bit of metal. Little flakes of um, I think that's about it. Yes, I do more, right? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, done. Let me take the tape off and look at it from a distance. And always, when you um, when you get it to a certain point, a lot of times if you take a break, of course I can't take a break, but if I look at it from a distance, um, or I look at it through um, the camera, and look at, if I look at it through the camera and then onto the monitor, it makes it look like you're looking at it from a farther away. And um, it holds everything together. And if you want to see if it's drawn right, look, hold it in a mirror, because the mirror will show you all your mistakes in your drawing. So I get the tape off. Oh. Hold on here, get the tape off, get rid of my things here. Let's go to our ending screen here. So guys, thanks again for dropping by and um, painting with me. So next Thursday is not going to be happening next Thursday because that's um, New Year's Eve. So instead, join me on next Wednesday. And um, we'll do a, a painting, which I'm not sure what it is going to be yet. But uh, again, thanks for showing up and have a great holiday, everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Cheers. See you later. Bye-bye.